Hi, my name is Jeff from Duda Labs. I'd like to thank you for taking the time to view our video on upgrading Mesh Rider firmware. All right, to get started, we need to navigate to our website to download the latest firmware from our web portal. You go to doodlelabs.com. Once we're on our web page, we'll scroll down to the bottom. Go to Design and Resources. This is where we uh, have archived the firmware loads along with our design and document packages for each of our series of radios. So go to Design and Resources. Once you get there, if you haven't already registered, it'll ask you for some information, uh, your name, company, etc., email, and they'll go ahead. Once you've done that, it'll, it'll, it'll give you access to the Design and Document Library, which looks like this. So at the top of the low, once you get in, the top of it will scroll down, and it starts with our each of our product series. We have the design and package, including step files, and all the different hardware uh, design information is here. The 2L family, that's our mini OEM and nano OEM series of product. Then our 2K series, that would be our wearable series of product in the OEM version as well. Then our 2J model is our external and our embedded version of products. That's our legacy product. And if we come down, we'll see our uh, mesh rider system firmware. Um, so what we have here is the October 2022 service release. And we had an October version. We, we found some, we did, we did some bug fixes to it and also some enhancements. Did a service release version here just recently. This is the version we'll actually go ahead and download from the website. Double click on it, it'll take it, take it and download it, put it in your download section of your PC. And one comment to make while we're here all of our firmware works across all products, across all product lines. So, independent of the different series of product, one set of firmware will manage. Each and every one of them. The version we have here, again, is October 2022 service pack. It's located in a zip file, so we'll go into the, get into the zip file, then I'll copy this out of the zip file, the .bin, which is our source code. We'll copy that out to a location that we can go reference when we want to upload, and we'll start that process here by logging into the radio. When managing the radio, I prefer to use Mozilla Firefox back to there and then we'll go ahead and log in. The IP address of this particular radio is 10.223.46.71. I'll we'll type out. Let's go back and make that a 46.71. There we go. So we'll log in. As we see here, um, the username is root by default. Password is none. There's no password in default mode. We'll go ahead and log in. It takes you to our configuration screen for simple configuration. But before I go to the uh, firmware upgrade section, I want to go to our status. We'll hit the status bar. So the left side of our web, web screen of our screen here is our drop-down menus for our GUI. Go to the status section, just real quick, look at the overview, status overview. Let's want to see what we've got in terms of the current version of firmware on the radio prior to upgrading. So in this case, it's the, it is the October 2022 version. So if we look, at the user host name is first, the model. In this case, it's an RM5800, which is our 5.8 gig radio. Uh, and we've got MeshWriter firmware October 2022. So we'll go to the October service release version. And to do that, we have to go to the advanced section of our GUI. So click on advanced, and that's where we can actually do upgrade of firmware and other, other advanced features. So go to advanced, go to system. Once we scroll down in the system, we go to backup flash firmware. That'll take us to the landing page 
we can upgrade. Now in this case, now when we go to upgrade, we have a choice. Either keep the previous settings of the previous configuration or uncheck that and basically wipe the settings clean when you do the upgrade. Um, this particular version of firmware, the service pack automatically uh, wipes the configuration, the previous configuration off and gives a clean, a clean configuration. So it overrides this checkbox to keep settings. Normally, we recommend unchecking this anyway so that any new enhanced features that are enabled in the new version of firmware when you upgrade will, will maintain their enabled status. If you had this checkbox on from the previous firmware, those features didn't exist, so they will not be enabled in the new version of firmware. So we, our recommendation is to uncheck it, allow the firmware to be loaded uh, natively with a fresh set of config, and basically rebuild that config after you've already up upgraded the firmware. And you, you probably would not want to save, save and restore a previous config because, again, the old config would not have the new, new feature enhancements. And, again, when you did that, it would basically disable those new feature enhancements. So the, the better option is to do your upgrade and then build the configuration uh, by hand. So to do this upgrade, we'll go ahead and go to Browse to where we've saved our .bin file. And, again, in this case, it would be the October service release. We'll load that. We'll flash image. And again, this, this image will automatically uh, override the keep settings box anyway, so whether or not we had this checked, it, it was default to basically um, wipe the configuration clean. Okay, now we'll be given basically the, the fact that the flash has been verified and a checksum has been issued. You can compare that with the previous file, um, but it has been verified. We can proceed now to upgrade and load the new firmware. So we hit proceed, and the process to upgrade takes about five minutes. So we'll go ahead and preempt the video and come back when it's, when it's loaded. The one thing we do not want to do while it's uploading the firmware is turn the power down the device. Um, so leave the device obviously powered on, and we'll let this process proceed to, to completion. One thing you can do to verify whether or not the firmware has been loaded is you can kind of run a, run a ping to the device and see if, it, see if it gets a response. So run a continuous ping, dash T, and if we get a response, once we get a response, we'll know that the radio has come back from the upgrade and it's come out of reboot. Right now it has not yet, so a few more moments. Okay, our radio's responded and it's back online. So we'll go ahead and uh, log back in. All right, we're given a security warning. We'll go to advanced and We'll accept the risk. We're going to live a little dangerously today and log in. And we'll take a look. We just want to verify that we've got this version loaded. So again, to verify what version we're on, go to Status, Overview. And yes, we're on the 1022 Service Pack release. So we have, uh, we've completed the process. So that finishes that. And I'd like to thank you again for taking the time to view our video on upgrading your MeshRider firmware. Thanks again.